Hey everyone, it's me Tins. I'm actually back with 28 weeks update. I'll be 29 weeks tomorrow. Um, yeah, I did not get around to filming this over the weekend. So today is Monday. So this video should go up. If not tomorrow, then it'll go up uh, the following day. So yeah, slowly but surely approaching uh, time for baby to get here. It seems so crazy that we're on the cusp of August and then that October is still like two months away, but I really only have like 11 weeks left of this pregnancy. So <laughs> that is so exciting. I cannot believe it has gone by this fast. I, you know, a lot of women say like, oh my God, I feel like I've been pregnant forever, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, like, I'm really just starting to feel pregnant now. And so, yeah, it's like I've almost only been pregnant for like a month or two. So that's been really cool. Of course, if you would have asked me back in the first and second trimester, I probably would have told you something different. But I was telling my mom, she asked me, you know, she asked me every day how I feel. And um, it was really funny because I told her, like, I'm feeling really, really pregnant now. So... You know, uh, all those times of uh, kind of trying to figure out, like, what's going on and how do I feel and that and other, finally feeling pregnant. I mean, it does help that, like, the bump is getting bigger and um, things like that. So, nonetheless, uh, let's see. Let's get started. So, I know I told you guys last week that I was going to kind of go over... Uh, how my appointment went and all that type of stuff. Really straightforward. Um, I had my 28 week appointment last week. Went really well. Um, from 24 weeks to 28 weeks, I'm up like 3 or 4 pounds. So, fortunately, no qualms about that from my PA. She was like, you're gaining weight. Good. Yada, yada. Um, baby, its heart rate was 141. It's been like in the 140s, 150s, like it's been in the 140s the past couple of times. So again, I don't really get into like a lot of the old wives tells and things like that. I've I've seen people say, oh, the heart rate's above 120, that's a girl, and if it's, or whatever, 140, it's a girl, or 120, it's a boy, or whatever. You know, I think there's like, Below 140 is a boy, and then above 140 is a girl, or something like that. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't really matter. As long as we have one or the other, and baby is happy, healthy, and, you know, has ten finger ten toes, two eyes, mouth, nose, all the good stuff. You know, we just pray for a healthy baby, and, you know, just, we already feel so blessed that we're even having a child, so we just pray for, for it to be healthy. Uh, you know, it's funny because my husband actually gets a lot more irritated and, and kind of, like, guarded when people, like, want to guess and things like that. I'll entertain it a little bit more because I, I just find it entertaining. But he doesn't like to at all. It's funny, we were actually talking about today, if we wanted to do what I was asking him, um, kind of about the 340 ultrasound. And the main reason that he doesn't want to do it is because he doesn't want to risk finding out what the sex is. And I go, well, you know, there's, like, the chance of that happening is pretty slim. And the biggest concern with me is, well, I would love to see what the baby looks like right now. I really want to wait until that moment when baby comes out and I can look at the face for the first time and look at the baby for the first time and my husband. And I can kind of share that moment together live in person uh, versus kind of seeing the baby in utero, which is really cool. And I said, you know, what if one day, you know, like, I think that'd be something great to show, like, the kid and, you know, every other kid in school is going to have, like, a three ultrasound picture that they'll come show everybody for show and tell. But I think we really came down to the conclusion that we're not going to do a 3D, 4D ultrasound. Um, number one, because... We want to keep that moment just kind of for the birth, number two, uh, because we don't want to risk finding out the sex kind of inadvertently. And then number three, I'm not a big fan of doing like excessive, excuse me, excessive, oh, uh, bleh, excessive ultrasounds unless need be. So, um, you know, 
I'll, I will just go with it and we'll make sure we get a lot of pictures <laughs> once baby actually gets here in 11 weeks. So crazy. Um, so yeah, that was the appointment as far as like big things. My blood pressure was like 108 over 60. It's usually like 100 over 60. I had just eaten the two eggs that I was supposed to eat for the glucose test, which I'll go into that in a little bit. And, um, so that's probably why. And I mean, honestly, like, eight, you know, I don't know, eight points or whatever is not, not really that significant. That's still a uh, very low blood pressure. So it hasn't been over that at the doctor's office at all. And even when I've had my blood pressure taken other places, it's been like 112 over 60 something. So I typically stay below you know, well below what, uh, in the, on the lower range of blood pressure, things like that. Um, what else appointment wise? We listen, like I said, we listened to the baby heart sounded good and strong. 141 was the heartbeat. Um, my fundal height, I was 26 weeks, 20, no, I'm sorry, 27 weeks, uh, six days. I was turning 20, Aye, aye, aye. I was turning 28 weeks the next day, and my fundal height was 29, which has been pretty consistent. Even at my 24-week appointment, my fundal height was a 25 at that one. So I've been kind of consistently measuring a little bit ahead, and I even have measured a little bit ahead at my ultrasounds um, as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's very arbitrary. It's... Not like I'm going to like move my due date up, but I, I do, I will not be surprised if I go a little bit earlier than the projected due date right now, which isn't a big deal at all. I still think the baby will come in October, um, but you know, anytime after 37 weeks, you just have to be ready. So yeah, weight, fundal height, heartbeat, blood pressure... Um, so yeah, next thing on the... Alright guys, sorry about that. I ran out of memory. So, super quick. I hope I have a good bit left. I'll delete like a 12 minute video, so I should be pretty good. Um, so yeah, glucose test. Basically, it went really well. I have a big sweet tooth anyway, so the drink didn't bother me. I had the fruit punch flavor, and I actually liked it. Like, I was like, I'll take another one. Um, uh, not for the three hour test, but <laughs> just, you know, at that time. But um, drank that, had no issues. The baby was <laughs> extremely hyper for the rest of the day. So um, even though I, you know, usually have something sweet every day, I don't usually take, you know, that much at one time. So yeah, baby was extremely hyper uh, for the rest of the day. It was a little crazy. But that went fine. My PA said she would call me the same day, maybe not the next day, if anything came back up normal. I haven't gotten a phone call. So, you know, I would just, I can assume that everything went fine with that and uh, no issues. So, yay on that. Um, and that was pretty much it. Like, I had my, I drank the drink after my blood pressure and weight taken. And then my PA came in and did, you know, all her stuff, listen to the heartbeat measure me, talk to me, and then by the time like all that got done, I only had like 30 more minutes to wait until I went and got my blood drawn, and it was just a simple, like, you know, blood draw, and I went on my merry way, so that was pretty much it, um, not a really a whole lot as far as like that appointment goes again, uneventful, which I'm always happy, I feel so blessed about that everything has kind of progressed uneventful thus far. Now, as far as getting into symptoms for last week, most of the week I felt perfectly fine, except for being tired. Oh my God. Um, I actually have more energy this week and feel less tired than I felt last week. But, oh my God. I was really feeling the third trimester last week. It was, it was pretty legit. Um... I was so tired, just like exhausted, like not even just tired, but like exhausted. So 
that's definitely a change from the previous trimester. Um, but it's, it's weird because I have energy and I can, like if I'm home, I, I'll do stuff. But I just really don't feel like getting out of the house very much. So I'm definitely nesting um, and things like that. So the next thing, sleep. Sleep has been pretty uncomfortable. Um, whether it's getting up in the night to use the bathroom two, uh, one or two times, which has been that way pretty much the entire pregnancy. Now, because my bump is getting bigger, because baby's getting bigger, it is a lot less comfortable to sleep. Um, you know, you just can't move around and toss and turn like you used to could. And, you know, anytime I move, I'm, I feel like I'm just lugging myself over. It's, like, so crazy. So that's probably the, the biggest gripe. It's just I'm not having the best sleep right now. But, I mean, I'm getting sleep and I'm getting rest. And I definitely relax and chill out and decompress even when I'm awake. So... You know, I'll take it. There, Things could be worse. So, nothing to really complain about as far as that goes. And I'm not even a big sleeper in the first place, which is the only reason why when I do go to sleep, I try to, like, really enjoy it and, and you know, whatever. Um, cravings and things like that, nothing really too significant. Like, I, I still love fruit. Eating a lot more vegetables uh, lately. Some fresh salad, tomato things like that. One thing I will say is I don't like too many um, like strong flavors. I wasn't so much like that before I was pregnant. A little bit. If something was like too sweet or too salty. But being pregnant I'm even that much more sensitive. So like when it comes down to like salad dressing just a little bit. Um, it was funny we went to Cold Stone last week because it was my husband's birthday. And I got, like, my normal cake batter. Well, I got, like, the birthday. Even though it wasn't my birthday, I got the birthday, like, creation. And instead of getting the brown, I just got cookie dough. And I could not even finish it. Like, it was just so sweet. And Cold Stone, like, it's usually really, like, their ice creams are usually very, very sweet anyway. Especially the cake batter. But this one was, like, ugh. I got halfway through it, and I was like, that's it. And that's another thing about, like that's been like this pregnancy is that I can really only tolerate and I mean like I guess like taste wise and like what my body kind of wants so much sugar at a time like I usually have a huge sweet tooth I mean cookies cupcakes you know cake brownies ice cream like all the time all day long candy and being pregnant like I am I'll eat like you know a little bit you know once a day or twice a day but it's not nearly on the same level as before I was pregnant so you know what can you do um still doing really good with my diet I'm doing my protein drink I'm still in the morning I'm getting kind of tired of it so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to start whipping up smoothies and stuff like that because I was just putting it in milk and kind of taking it straight to the head but that's getting really old and that's the thing with me with like eating breakfast and stuff like that like I have to switch it up after about two weeks because it just gets to the point where I just can't stomach the same thing over and over and over for breakfast so I've gone through eating scrambled eggs with cheese I've gone through eating chicken pot pies I've gone through eating uh, burritos pizza I pretty much eat anything in the morning that I can get my hands on I was like that before pregnancy because I'm just not a, like, a big breakfast food person. Like, I'll eat eggs and grits, but I'm not going to get up on, like, a weekday morning when I have to, like, be to work and cook, like, cook up some grits. Eggs are pretty quick, but, yeah. And even then, I don't eat that type of stuff every day. Um, I don't like bacon and sausage. and I really don't, like I said, care for any breakfast food. The only thing I really eat that's traditionally breakfast is um, eggs and cheese and grits so yeah you know it's about that time for me to, to switch it up in the mornings I think I'll just do probably some boiled eggs which I have two I boiled yesterday and I'm thinking I might have to eat those for dinner tonight and I might eat 
what we had for dinner last night for our breakfast tomorrow morning or like half of it or something. So I just had to switch it up and I'll eat leftovers from what we had for dinner too. If I don't finish my dinner, I'll eat in the morning. So that's kind of how that is. I'm still not eating really a lot of um, fish or really seafood. Uh, the one day that Hubs and I wanted crab legs, the lady like said someone bought out like her friggin' whole supply that day, and that really sucked. So we ended up having like baked chicken that night. But you know, as far as everything else, um, been doing really good on. Don't have the biggest appetite, but I think part of it now. It's not that I'm not hungry, it's that I'm, the meals are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I have been supplementing with some healthy snacks. I've got in them like the Nature Valley oats, the granola oats, and those are actually really good. I can just kind of, they come in like a resealable bag and I can just eat those throughout the day. I have trail mix, like I said, fruit I always have on hand. Um, I'll have like fruit, like the natural fruit snacks. I get the Simply Balanced ones from Target. I won't say they're new. But I have um I have the little kind of squares uh, I bought previously, and then just last week I got like the fruit, like the bar, like the flat bar. So I typically try to you know stick with the healthy snacks or whatever, and um, yeah. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. My skin seems to be a little bit more broken out lately but it could be the the weather change or the heat I didn't have headaches for about two or three days so it might just be some hormonal things going on and that's okay you know I fully expect for the third trimester to bring a few different things that uh, the first and second didn't bring if you visit my blog newmamadires.blossom.com I've put up my second trimester in review where you can see uh, the pictures of me from each week so I'll put that, I'll put probably just a link to my blog. I just posted it like a few days ago. So if you scroll down, you'll be able to see it's kind of my progression. And, uh, oh yeah, baby movements really quick. And I'll show you a belly shot and then that'll be it until next week, which will be 30 weeks. So excited. Um, no, it'll be 29 weeks. Mm. So anyway, baby movements have been getting really, really strong. And I'm starting to feel like really hard parts. So I'm probably feeling like legs. And things like that so legs or elbows or something hard and I it's like been moving across my belly and the baby's literally like taking over my whole abdomen so that's really fun I'm feeling those all the time all throughout the day a lot stronger a lot harder so that's very exciting and very reassuring because that, that lets me know the baby's active and it's growing and it's funny that at my appointment when she tried to find the heartbeat the baby was like she had to chase the baby around and then it was like kicking and stuff because it didn't like the doppler so it was really really cute and i just laugh it's so funny i see the baby moving my belly i just laugh because i'm like what are you doing in there and you know i'll poke it it'll move to one side i'll poke it again it'll move to the other side and It'll get a little attitude. It's just the cutest little thing. So I cannot wait to meet this kid. I'm so excited. But anyway, let me do a belly shot really quick. I'm still in like my work clothes. So you have to excuse that. But um, here's the belly with the shirt on. So again, growing. Here's it from the other side. Here is it, the shirt up, this is very round, <laughs> very round. Lenny and Edgar's got a little bit darker on the bottom, it's still very faint on the top, and no stretch marks so far, I have this like one little spot that I think I like scratched um, because it was itchy, and that's pretty much, I, mean, I really don't consider that a stretch mark, but you know, anyway, I'm pretty stretch mark free but I'm very diligent about my um, creams and lotions and keeping that area moisturized so anyway all right guys thank you so much for watching I'll talk to you guys next week have a great week and be blessed visit me on my blog newmamadiaries.blogspot.com and again I'll talk to you later bye